Welcome to an absolute monster of an episode where I'm going to show you my full Super Nintendo game collection NTSC PAL, both boxed as well as unboxed, as well as the odd Super Famicom game. So yes, the Super Nintendo collection. We're going to start here, we're going to move over there and then over there. Please watch this episode in its entirety because there's a lot of games that you guys haven't seen. I'm going to take you through everything. And believe you me, I'm surprised at how much my Super Nintendo collection has grown over all of the car boosts, retro game hunts, the five, well, the five pound game challenges, even though I've got no Super Nintendo games in the five pound game challenge. What tends to happen is I'll go in, I'll do the challenge, and then I'll see a SNES game that I wanna get. So it just baits me into buying more Super Nintendo games. So you're gonna see absolutely everything today. Let's go. So do forgive my attire, I'm actually in my pyjamas, it's one of those kinds of days. Now I have here, we're going to start here because I don't think you would have seen these games unless you're very eagle eyed and you watch episodes from start to finish. These are new-ish boxed games that I've acquired say over the last three months. There's other games when I take you to the unbox stuff I'll show you some really cool unbox stuff as well. I'm going to save the most boring one to last. Um, now what we've got here is a copy of Doomsday warrior and um, i'll take it out of the sentinel case so this is i'll read it at the back so it's earth faced desperate times in nearly every country water supplies were contaminated and famine raged governments scrambled to supply good food and water to the masses i mean there's a massive story behind this there's a huge ass story behind this and i don't know where did i get this from i think it was from the doorway to darkness retro game hunt episode um obviously we got like we're missing oh no i'll tell you what this was i know where this was from this was from game and movie in sheffield when me and sarah went up to sheffield because i remember saying that there's no insert so i still haven't bought them from etsy so got all of the kind of random gubbins you know little leaflet warranty manual really nice and fresh boxes in good condition and cartridge is also in sterling condition um, you guys can check that out there. You'll see little snippets of gameplay with some random facts as well throughout this video. I'll make it as engaging um, as, and as enticing as I possibly can for you guys. Um, so yeah, I'll link as well the playlist to the retro game hunts in the card section. So next up then is quite an obscure title here. We got Alfred Chicken. Um, and this was from Retro World in Derby. Massive sticker on the back. Still haven't had time to take the uh, stickers off the box carefully because there is a couple of methods you can do. Um, this unfortunately is missing the poster, but it does have the manual, so not quite complete. And I say this is quite an obscure title because in my opinion, it is. Um, I don't see it around at the retro gaming fairs or markets very often. And I think if you're gonna see any of the more obscure titles, it's gonna be at the big conventions. It's gonna be at the big expos where you can go and buy video games, but I don't and haven't seen this around at all. It's actually from Dubai. Um, so again, really nice condition. A lovely little side scrolling color popping platformer. Again, additional bits and bobs will be on the screen, guys. Um, next up then, speaking of bright popping colors, this is a lovely isometric. Um, it says on the back, a lovely isometric game, if I finish my sentence. It says on the back, catch kid clown in a what? Klutzy new caper. Now this is a fantastic game. I believe my friend rented this from a store called Video Nights back in the day. Um, again, only manuals so missing all the slight additional bits there. Um, cartridge is in somewhat good condition. Even the back doesn't have any yellow in, so that's really nice. Super Nintendo carts, especially PAL, tend to have, when I find like yellow carts, it's always on the back that you get the yellow in. Um, obviously caused by the chemical bromine. There is a very good method for removing it, use, utilizing 2% hydrogen peroxide method. Have covered it, there is a guide on my website um, because I did an Amiga, an old Amiga 500 Plus. 
and it went, you know, it was a good job. It wasn't, it wasn't amazing, but it was a good job. And it was a lot better than what I'd kind of had, you know, the condition I bought it in. So might do that to a couple of the Super Nintendo cartridges that do have the yellow in. Luckily this doesn't. So Kid Clown in Crazy Chase. Kind of sounds like an old cartoon I used to watch when I was a little girl. Um, next up then we got some Crash Dummies. Um, my actual favourite Crash Dummy game was on the Nintendo Game Boy. Um, I also did a full collection of my boxed Game Boy games recently. I really found it fantastic. It's like you start the first level and you, you take a, um, a Crash Dummy to the top of this building and you've got to kind of crash down and through various obstacles and fires and like marquees that are just hanging over the windows it's really really fun and then there's a target at the bottom you need to hit there's lots of other different rounds as well but i found it really really rewarding so if you've not been keeping up with retro game hunts you may not have seen that in my collection now this i bought off ebay i think january february time uh, we got some lamborghini american challenge so this for me reminds me of Lotus Turbo Challenge 3 on the Amiga, one of my favourite Amiga games of all time and I, that's what really kind of pulled me into wanting to buy this. So Secret Love Lust um, for the 16-bit the, uh, the races as well as some 32-bit races as well but you know, again box condition, not too shabby in the slightest. Okay. Um, right, a couple of obscure ones here then. Got some Indiana Jones Greatest Adventure. This definitely was from the Doorway to Darkness episode. Um, this is a lovely, absolute lovely, um, complete mint. What's a mint? I would say it's a good kind of eight out of 10. It's even got some kind of packaging in the side here. Um, cartridge. I mean, check out the front of that cartridge, guys. You can see just how, I guess, gray, the native gray um, of the cartridge. It's really kept its colour, it's really nice and even the sticker doesn't have much um, like gritty stuff on it. Again, a game I've not really played but a game that is very very difficult to come by on the Super Nintendo and I'm looking forward to diving in. Um, got a lot going on here behind the scenes so hopefully we'll give you guys an update on what is going on but I've not really had much time to play any retro off stream unfortunately but i am hoping that that will change within the coming months stay freaking tuned and on that theme of the more kind of difficult to find games again still got the doorway to darkness uh, tag on here it's actually on the sentinel case i'll take it out this is the blues brothers again shown in the episode where we did a mammoth tour it's one of the best retro game stores i've ever been to so again a nice side scrolling little platform game fantastic little color palette with very eclectic and eccentric characters um, and I really do like that kind of purple it really does look nice there's not many Super Nintendo games uh, that have this this kind of color this plummy um, kind of purple so I think that's really really nice as well just a mild point to note for me there that you know I like even like obviously when I'm not playing my Super Nintendo the games are on the shelves and I want them to look pretty because obviously it's all about colour, obviously, just like all about when when I bought my car, age, there was, when was it, 2014, side story, um, they were like, right, what's important to you? And I was like, colour. So <laughs> I'm weird like that, I know, but forgive me, stupid girl, I know. Um, next up is, this was a birthday present I've not shown anywhere. This was from Reese. shout out to you Reese. G Nation, hashtag it up in the comment section below. This is the Brainies, which is like a little puzzle game. Um, just to avoid the glare, I'll take this out of the Sentinel case. If I can pop it out, it's actually well, this is this is a really well looked after uh, box and Sentinel case. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool. This is the new puzzle adventure game, which will give you endless sleepless nights. Oh yeah, oh yes. Puzzles aren't necessarily my kind of thing, but this is definitely fun. If you do find a copy of Brainies, definitely snag, bag and tag a copy. Do yourselves a favor. Um, Double Dragon, check this. Not a game that you frequently cast eyes on, on many retro game hunts. And if you do, you tend to get this unboxed. Uh, Double Dragon, think the, along the lines of Final Fight, Streets of Rage, Double Dragon was one of those side-scrolling beat-em-up games that just oozed a hell of a lot of charm in the 80s and the 90s and entertained many of us for 
I mean, still up till today in 2021. So this was from Mobile Game Exchange in Derby. A couple of months back, went there, took some footage there. I would urge you guys to go and binge watch the retro gaming uh, playlist, the hunt playlist, um, because also from my Mobile Game Exchange, picked up Mario's Time Machine, which isn't the best. It's a spin-off and it is not the best spin-off it really isn't actually it really really isn't it says so get ready for an incredible easy to take adventure not only will you help the human race but you'll meet the most famous people who ever lived and you'll travel all over the globe and back and back and back into history um hmm yeah i think this is actually i don't know if it's missing poster um no it actually has a poster let's take a look at the poster shall we um little perks of the 90s love stuff like this very crisp very fresh poster would you check it out nice nice little a2 size poster there with mario a couple of screenshots and the box art so this i believe cost me 50 quid which isn't too bad the box on the front is slightly sun damaged but that doesn't matter to me as much as it is a spin-off and i was just happy to have this in my collection so these are the titles that you've probably not seen. We're gonna dive over to my NTSC box, more PAL box, and then we're gonna take a look in another part of the game room at the unboxed. So if you've seen my videos for quite some time, you'll know that I'm one of the kind of lucky owners of the Woolworths release of Batman Forever. This is again, is classed as one of the rarest Super Nintendo games out there. Unfortunately, box has seen better days, but one of the best things I like about this kit is it is completely complete and what i mean about that is if you're going to buy yourselves a copy of this variant you want to make sure that everything in here is included and there's lots of stickers now unfortunately a lot of the releases of these i'm doing this one-handed so just bear with me um i'm missing a lot of the stickers and there's a single sticker in here i there this as well this tends to be missing however as you can see we have the holographic bruce wayne nothing is written in either none of the pages are missing and there's additional stickers um somewhere i might be wrong actually oh no i'm not it's it's in the back here um where are we you can kind of see the different colored pages like all of these stickers are fully intact so if you do ever come across this you want to make sure there's no writing in any of these and that the stickers are all intact because this is rare as rocking horse poop with the VHS as well as the game. And whilst the game is a little bit lackluster, this is a wonderful piece of kit. Okay, let's take a look first and foremost at some of the NTSC box games that I have. Um, Mario Paint as well was a, a nostalgic favorite of mine. Um, got it for a birthday, don't remember exactly how old I was, but lots of good memories playing through Mario Paint. Um, two PAL controllers right there. There may even be some PAL games mixed up in here. Um, apologies if so, it is what it is. It's in no particular order. So Shadow Run was one, this is PAL. So obviously this is one, this was one of my 2020 games, um, goals, so to speak. So really, really nice, lovely, isometric kind of cyberpunk-esque game there i'm gonna leave that there just to kind of create more space to kind of go through these these are bootlegs not a big fan of bootlegs at all um captain commander that that is an original but this obviously is a bootleg um these came as part of facebook bundles i got years ago and um, otherwise i wouldn't have typically purchased them so um now a lot of what you see here and they are really good games are sport titles um, except for terra enigma this is a, I have, um, and I'll show it you, but this is, again, a bootleg um, I got as part of a bundle. Um, this is a bootleg. Um, I've never actually unboxed this. Uh, I do believe it's actually a sealed copy, um, but I do have an original of that. But everything else on here is predominantly sport titles, NTSC, um, not bad, you know, nothing to kind of scream about. There's some really cool, interesting titles here, like, it's like World Heroes. Not the best box art, and definitely not the best condition box, but nonetheless, pretty darn cool. We've got a nice copy down here of Super R-Type. 
also have a um, PAL copy of this. Um, there we go. Again, not the best box art, not the best condition box by any stretch. Got a nice little dint there, but I'm still a huge fan. Um, Super Tennis is an interesting one of me because as much as, as kind of far as sports titles go, this is actually quite a solid game and it's pretty cheap if you did, let me just move that down there. It's pretty cheap if you did want to get it on PAL and or NTSC. So this happens to be a lovely condition box. I, again, got all of these as part of a bundle. It was years ago, absolutely years ago. And I've tried to keep all my NTSC stuff together, but there's actually some here, which we're going to go through. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of that shelf. Um, got some Madden in there. Um, what we got here, let's have a look at this bad boy. Um, a little bit of boxing ring legends. Lovely. Reminiscent of Super Punch Out. Uh, the classic California games as well, too. Again, not the best Super Nintendo game. Definitely not the best sequel for one of the most beloved franchises ever. Um, but still, it's, it's in the collection. I'm not a huge fan of it, but nonetheless, it's there. I'm um, just going to kind of show you this as well. Fighter's History. Interesting one on me. Um, not one you tend to see around that often, but nonetheless, um, cool. And if you can pick it up, it's quite obscure. I'm not sure if you've got a PAL release though. I'll probably put some information on screen about these as we continue to go along. Um, we have, bear with me, some street combat there. Another interesting one. So nice little kind of fighter. Knock out your, knock out action for two players at once. Your mission, so you can destroy the group of ruthless villains who stop at nothing to wipe up you off the entire map. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, okay, so we're gonna move over to some PAL. I'm gonna put all this back. Got some PAL, got loads more stuff, guys. Don't go anywhere. So absolutely loads to get through here. We've got three rows packed full of PAL, with the exception of the odd NTSC um, game wedged in. But again, I said, the majority of my other NTSC box are on here. I have SNES games to go show you down there, but I'm going to get back on camera for that. Um, so we'll kind of go through this. Now, I am not a huge, I am not a fan of repros, like I said, but this is a repro box. It is an actual um, copy inside, but I, I've really struggled to find a nice box copy. So I, I, just got, I just got a repro box. So I know you guys aren't a fan of repro boxes, don't judge me. I apologise. Don't want to upset anybody. But at least, you know, I'm being honest. I'm not going to sit and go, oh, yeah, look how amazingly crisp this box is. And it is. It's good. It's not bad for a repro, but it's a repro. So you can go there. Again, we've already spoke about Super Tennis um, as seen in the NTSC shelf up there. So I obviously had a PAL SNES living in the PAL region growing up. I had a lot of fun on this. I remember being off school, playing this in my bedroom and just being hooked on getting into the rallies. Really, really loved it. I mean, I know it's kind of weird, isn't it? But really did enjoy it. Um, I'll kind of move along. Nothing much to say about this. I think I actually picked this up, fun fact, for about three quid. Two or three quid? I think it was three quid. Um, seven tested, no way, pet. I'm sure it was like two quid, two or three quid nonetheless. And you know, for a box SNES game, that's not bad. That is not bad. And you can find some really good football titles from the Super Nintendo era and the Sega Mega Drive, which I'm gonna do a full collection of that as well later this week. Um, you can see all the stuff on here then. So we've got like Equinox, uh, Ghoul Patrol, which is the follow up to Zombies Ate My Neighbours, or Zombies as it was known here in PAL regions. Definitely not the best um, follow up. It certainly doesn't have captivating gameplay like Zombies does, which is actually there by the way. And I will show you kind of, there is stuff, everybody's got this corner, corner in the game room where they wedge their stuff behind. And these you've already seen because I've done these, so we won't go into these, but these we will. Um, nice NTSC copy of Brain Lord here, um, which is top down RPG. And uh, this, well, I've had this quite some time. Had this quite some time, and again, it's one, I don't believe we got this on PAL. If we did, it's incredibly obscure, but I've never seen it on PAL. Speaking of PAL, um, classic. Um, Super R-Type, like I said, 
have it here also on the PAL variant, which is a much nicer box in comparison. Where is it? Where is it? Um, to the NTSC copy of Super R Type. So, really nice, not bad. Shout out to Kirkby Sales and Exchange there. Not too bad. Um, and a gorgeous, if you're into your kind of like, you know, your nice little kind of, I guess like, think Wonder Boy and you have Nintendo's version of Wonder Boy. So, Super Adventure Island, really cute, neat little um, side scrolling platform adventure. Um, Again, I don't have these. I'm just gonna say this now, I don't have them in alphabetical order because at the rate I buy games, I would be forever pulling things out and putting them in order. But I will say this, got some things going on behind the scenes and let's just say there could be a potential move on the horizon, which would mean the, the game room is gonna be built from the ground up. But we'll see, stay tuned. I'll be putting all of the updates here on YouTube. Now, let's just kind of move some of these out and I'll show you. So we've got um, Troddlers, Yogi Bear, classic adventures of Mighty Max. Another one that you guys tend to recommend um, a lot, actually, quite surprisingly, you guys recommend this to me a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and start piling up down here. And I've got some classic Primal Rage. Um, tended to, to play this really on the PS1 rather than any other platform. It isn't, again, it's really, really blocky, really cheesy. Sound effects are terrible. Um, it's kind of just Street Fighter with a, yeah, dinosaur skin, I guess, is the best way to kind of explain it. Got some Syndicate, got some race driving. Down there is the classic international um, football superstar soccer malarkey blah 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 but it's a good one it is a good football game so what we've got here some NBA Jam Tournament Edition um, Super Alest and um, we've got some Power Drive you know so we've got some good stuff on this shelf um, Ogre Battle and then what I'll do I'll show you this shelf now and then we'll kind of move down to the ones you've not really seen you can kind of see them anyway I've actually got some NT N64 games wedged in back there, but yeah, let's continue. This shelf now, I've already taken some off. Um, let me talk about this for a moment. This is Incantation. Now this was recommended to me by Ski Jump Nose. I do a chill and chat session for channel members in the bacon and eggs tier and above, where we talk about movies, video games, etc. And this was a point of conversation. We were talking about obscure Super Nintendo games and Incantation is one of those. So I just would like to shout out to Reese, who sent me this. Um, I believe he got this from one of the shops up near, kind of up north, Huddersfield Way. Really wicked little title. I'll put additional facts on screen, like I said, for some of these more obscure titles, for those of you that want to know that little bit more information. Uh, we also got some Total Carnage here. Apologies, this was the SNES game I got for three quid. <laughs> I said it about, I think it was like this one, but it's actually this one, and again, when I showed this, you guys said this is a pretty good golf game. As far as golf games go, this is pretty solid. And for three pound, I wanna know if you would pass it up or if you would purchase it. It'd be silly to pass it up. Um, WrestleMania there, WWF Raw, along with Royal Rumble down there. So we got all the stuff here. You can kind of see what we've got. This is a SNES game as well. This is an NTSC SNES game, if I can uh, freaking pull it out. This comes with um like this encyclopedia i'll show you in a minute i'll show you in a minute um so we've got all these kind of good snes games here we've got the the um red version of super mario world along with the yellow version what is this mortal kombat 2 some zool donkey kong country 3 alien 3 and the red mario kart so if i go ahead we just kind of pop some of these out these are just staple titles in my opinion but you may have a different kind of 
idea on what's a staple tile. Um, back here, we're rocking some classic earthworm gym. Now check out the condition. I mean, you can kind of see through the Sentinel case that that is in sterling condition. I still, to this very day, struggle with earthworm gym because I don't understand it. It just seems so <sighs> eccentric for the sake of being eccentric. I don't know, it just seems to lack a lot of purpose to me. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but it's just a weird one on me. So we, we've got a bell today, see that blue one? Right, some Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Bomberman, we've got some Tetris and Dr. Mario, and I know you guys are gonna love this next one. You're gonna love this next one. You're gonna absolutely love it. Ready? Oh, Biker Mice from Mars. Another obscurity. Um, picked this up from John Shaw's secondhand shop in my hometown, um, my childhood hometown rather, of Alfreton. So, yes, I think I only paid 30 quid for this. It could have even been less. Bought to you in association with Snickers. Now, everybody loved the cartoon of this, and as you guys can see, this is an isometric racing game. Fun, but difficult as hell to control. So yeah, so that, that's kind of everything on that shelf. We'll have like a quick recap. Um, got it all along here. Did a bit of B-roll on that. You've seen everything on here. We're gonna go down here, and then we're gonna kind of go back on camera for them, etc., etc. Let's continue. Okay, all I've done is I've removed the ones that I showed you when we were down by the television, which basically frees up this shelf quite nicely for you guys to see. Got some Page Master, Mr. Nuts, Prince of Persia. Oh, and an NTSC SNES converter. Yay. Um, Aladdin and Goof Troop Cannon Fodder is a lovely classic. Shout out to the Amiga fans because Cannon Fodder in my opinion is best played on the Amiga which is another 16-bit classic home computer done lots of videos on the Amiga um should probably do more if I'm honest Super Star Wars Putty Secret of Evermore which has this dropped in price I think I paid like 85 90 quid for this complete has it dropped in price I definitely think Secret of Man has dropped in price um I paid Wow, I paid uh, like 2014, 120 quid. Unfortunately, it has a reproduction map as well. But car only, I've seen that go as low as 35 pound, guys. As low as 35 pound, which is interesting. Uh, considering, I wonder why it's dropped in price. I don't know, maybe it's because it's had multiple releases. Um, you guys can see as well, there's donkey kong all those kind of staple titles and then this is obviously a repro because it never got released but it's pretty cool actually having um what could have been eh? what could have been um a star fox 2 um physical copy now what we're gonna do i'm gonna head back we're gonna show the unbox games now i'm gonna show you pictures of that and then i'm gonna be back on camera to show you the beauties in there So I hope you guys are really enjoying the episode so far. We've seen what's over on the shelves. We've had a look at some stuff you may not have seen. And now I'm gonna show you what was in the little end stand, which is just down in the corner here. 
off camera. Now you've seen an episode, I dare say if you've been following me for quite some time, about the blockbuster competition cart, Starwing or Star Fox. Um, there's only 2,000 of these in circulation or they're actually made. I don't know if there's that many in circulation, um, but I own one of them. So this has three levels. The object of the game in the blockbuster competition was to get as many points as you could across the three levels and uh, before the time runs out essentially. So 200 quid, 230 pound I paid for this. This is one of the rarer Super Nintendo games. Um, I'll show you guys a nice little close up. Star Fox isn't the most, uh, it's, well, in fact, it's one of the most common games out there for the Super Nintendo alongside the likes of the Mario games. But I was pretty, pretty stoked to own this. And this is one of my prized possessions. Very, very happy. So I'm going to carefully put that away. Um, we'll fly through these. We've got Prehistoric Man, which I know some of you guys have mentioned to me for so over the last 12 months. This has been recommended to me so much. And I haven't shown it much on my collection because to be honest, the end stand down there doesn't get much love and it should. So I'm giving it lots of love in this episode. Um, so Prehistoric Man. Really, really awesome little platform game. Um, next up, we got, in fact, I'll just move. This is very difficult to shimmy all these around. Uh, Pink Goes to Hollywood and Rise of the Robots. Not really a great deal of positive energy to say about Rise of the Robots, but this, <laughs> graphically, gameplay-wise, this definitely lacks. You can hear my dog barking in the background saying, subscribe to my mum's channel. We'll let her continue barking. Um, Picked this up at Mobile Game Exchange about eight, nine months ago. Um, Rise of the Robots. I don't know where, where I picked that up from, actually. It's got the old Dixons label on there, $59.99. Here, it, that's what we sell that in the UK. And um, this is a weird one. International Tennis Tour on PAL. Look at the guy's face on there. What an absolute, <laughs> like, what an absolute feast that is. Um, kind of looks like Tim Henman to me, but nonetheless, um, this is a little bit more polished compared to Super Tennis in terms of kind of graphics and how many kind of sprites are on screen at any one time, but Super Tennis is much better than this. So if you see this cheap, by all means pick it up, otherwise leave it, definitely. Um, next up then, we got some Home Alone and Beauty and the Beast, two classic movies by 90s kids like myself. I grew up in the 90s, I was born in the 80s, but grew up in the 90s. Um, loved both of these, really, really did. If I had to bin one, keep one, I'd definitely bin that as far as movies go, because Home Alone is a classic. Um, next up then we got, unfortunately I've never had the CD for this, uh, but we've got Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct and Miss Pac-Man. And this is here, Killer Cuts music CD included. Now, like I said, Maybe it's a collecting goal of mine that I need to get the CD for this and really get a better conditioned box. Um, but Miss Pac-Man is, a, again, classic little Pac-Man spin-off with Miss Pac-Man and the formula is just don't get caught by the ghost, complete the level by eating all of the biscuits and get lots of points by eating fruit. Um, classic arcade vibes with Miss Pac-Man. Um, I will say as well, in doing this video, I actually found out that I own three copies of Mortal Kombat. So I'll be selling one box copy and one unbox copy over my Facebook group. If you want to jump over there, because that's where I sell all of my doubles. Links are in the description. And uh, we'll continue, shall we? Classic Disney Lion King. This is a really, really good game. As was the film back in 1994, five? Um, again, you play the role of uh, Simba. Um, you're on some kind of side-scrolling levels. There are some, some kind of I don't know how best to explain this without sounding like a silly sausage, but kind of like Simba running towards you like this. Yeah, I know I'm not very technically minded, so do forgive me. But this is a great game. It's also out on the Sega Mega Drive as well, and it does go for a pretty penny if you're looking to buy a copy. And. Um, Two classics next then, got some real classics going. Got some Lemmings and Super Castlevania 4. PC, back in the day, obviously Super Nintendo, crowning jewel. Lots of fun there. Um, now, two belters here, Batman Returns and Wolfenstein 3D. This, as far as Super Nintendo games go, Wolfenstein 3D is quite expensive and quite rare. 
Batman Returns not so much but both games are really really good and polished in terms of kind of like frames per second for me I think this really holds up well by today's standards this doesn't so much but it's a classic first person shooter formula that certainly laid solid foundations for Doom which everybody loves Doom or at least everybody loves Doom does everybody love Doom let me know in the comment section um, Bugs Bunny Rap Rabbit Rampage and some classic act razor here not going to say too much about those and then we've got some i'm not done by the way i've got a, like two more piles here we've got lord of the rings which boxed pal you don't see around that often but i want to know from you what is your favorite lord of the rings movie including the hobbit so out of all the six what is your favorite lord of the rings movie next up these are pretty cool i'm not gonna lie um this is um this is Nightmare Busters, and this is the um, 30th anniversary of Street Fighter 2. Now, just a little bit about Nightmare Busters. This should have had an official release on the Super Nintendo, but for whatever reason, back in the 90s, it got canned. And it was eventually given an official release here after the, I think one of the lead developers unfortunately passed away, and it was released in his honor. And I managed to get a copy. Um, Nightmare Busters, for those of you that don't know, I'll kind of read out the back. It says, um, a carnival of darkness has sprung to life. Synchronized with the wavelength of dreams, the miserable tyrant has discovered a way to enter them to convolute what children see, hear and feel while they sleep, all for the benefit of his twisted amusement. So this on the back, I mean, again, I'll just whack up a little bit of gameplay. Um, really lovely story around this. If you can get yourself a copy online, I would highly suggest it. Um, and then this was the, there's only kind of 5,500 of these Street Fighter 2 cartridges. Mine is the, I think it's the red cartridge. I've done full kind of video of this before, if you guys want to go check it out. Um, next up then, we've got, we're getting close to the end, <laughs> Plock and the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. I will say that Disney, Super Nintendo, and in fact, any Disney game, whether it's Mega Drive, GameCube, no matter what it is, Disney games are always really, really good quality. And anything with Mickey Mouse in has a little bit of a warm spot in my heart after playing the Mickey Mouse games to death on the Sega Mega Drive. Plock's also a hidden gem. Um, it's all good. We got some episodes running in the background there. Now here's my official copy of Terranigma and uh, the classic Chaos Engine, loved this particularly on the Amiga, but I have actually live streamed this exact copy many, many moons ago. I picked this up from CEX and Terranigma actually was priced at 120, but I paid 90 for Terranigma. This is complete and it is in delicious condition. If you didn't skip the episode, you would have saw the bootleg copy that I had earlier. Um, carrying on then, we got some Lagoon and Beware of the Ultimate Evil of Warlock. This was a birthday gift for my 37th birthday last year. Um, and this, obviously, I picked up at a, it was a retro gaming market at some point. Now, here's one of those spare copies of Mortal Kombat that I'll be selling. Classic Urban Strike as well. Desert Strike is my favorite. Obviously, this is an NTFC copy. What is yours out of the kind of Desert Urban Strikey, Jungle Strikey um, trilogy? Let me know. Um, another couple of mix up titles here with like PAL and NTSC, NTSC being George Foreman's Knockout Boxing and some classic Street Racer. If for whatever reason you're not a fan of Mario Kart, Street Racer might just dampen your palate as far as kart racing games go. Um, we have four left, Jurassic Park Pitfall and finally Prince of Persia 2 and a different variant of the Lion King box. So I think this is much more the kind of obscure one. This looks like Disney classic video games. This is the classics version. Um, again, quite difficult to find this box. I think I got this from John Shaw's retro game store a couple of years ago. So that, whew, what a behemoth of a collection there. 
so thank you so much for watching this episode. I can't stress enough my gratitude to everybody that watches the episodes all the way through. And I would love to have more of you on board if you guys could hit that subscribe button and stay tuned because next episode I'm going to be doing my full Mega Drive collection. So we're oozing 16-bit passion here this week from the Lady Lounge. It's all about gaming. It's all genres of gaming for me, but the 16-bits era holds a very special place in my heart so come back for that one guys but until then thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye